Well, um, I'm Rita Nakashima Brock, and I was the first Asian American woman to ever earn a doctorate in theology, and I earned it at Claremont. Um, I've uh, been a professor. I've directed a think tank for women at Harvard University, and currently I direct the Soul Repair Center for Recovery from Moral Injury After War at Bright Divinity School in Fort Worth, Texas. I commute from Occupy Oakland. <laughs> I still live in Oakland. I refuse to leave. Um, and I've been a member of the Interfaith Tent um, at Oakland. We changed our name a uh, few once ago to Interfaith Tent for Justice, uh, but we are connected to Occupy Oakland. Uh, and I've been a member since pretty much it started in October. Um, I want to start by um, quoting a text that is a very familiar text, I think, to Christians. Uh, it's also a very familiar text to Jews. Um, it's a text that says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In the Jewish tradition, that's from Isaiah 61. It's an interesting text because it's a statement about what after the Babylonian exile, what is the kind of society that should reign on earth for the people of the earth? And it uses images of oaks of righteousness and the garden of God. And the garden of God, of course, is a garden in Genesis 2 that God created for human habitation on earth. And when people are moral and take responsibility for their moral behavior and tend the garden well, life thrives. Uh, and that and that sense of paradise on earth, not in heaven, but on earth, dominates Judaism after the exile. It's in Ezekiel with that image of the city with the rivers and the trees for healing. It dominates early Christianity when Irenaeus, the second century bishop, says, the church is planted as the paradise in this world. So this text from Luke, the powerful text about what God intends for human life to be like, that no one should be poor, captive, blind. And the acceptable year of the Lord is the jubilee year, this rolling jubilee of the forgiveness of debt. This is how Jesus defines at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, quoting from Isaiah 61, his mission, his, his life's mission. But he says an interesting thing after he reads from the Isaiah scroll. He says, today... This text is fulfilled in your hearing. And then, and then all the way through the Gospel of Luke, you have stories of what this world is supposed to be like, the Good Samaritan, all these ways in which love and forgiveness and justice prevail, um, but also opposition, people challenging the question, the contestation and conflicts. And yet that's today, this text has been fulfilled. And then on the cross, when the thief Talk, speaks to Jesus, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Not after you're dead, not tomorrow, but today you will be with me in paradise. So I think the Occupy movement is like that movement. It's another manifestation of a struggle against poverty for people. It's a struggle for justice, and it's a struggle for debt relief. Um, and it has the same quality of todayness. This it the Occupy Wall Street just suddenly erupted for most people out of nowhere, like suddenly it was here today. Um, and there actually wasn't a lot of preparation and lead up to it. The plan started in July, and then September seventeenth they went to Zuccotti Park and put down the tents. And in Oakland it happened on October tenth, and within a month's time, the Occupy movement had actually changed the national conversation. I don't know if you remember what the media was talking about and everybody was fussing over it in August, but it was about the debt ceiling and, oh my gosh, you know, taxes should be lower and, oh, who's the Republican candidate this week? 
um, that was what the conversations were about in August. And suddenly, in late September, they started talking about social inequality, foreclosure, rising poverty rates. That had not been part of the national conversation until the Occupy movement forced it. But, and so it, was, it had this quality of today. Today, this is now happening. Um, and it seemed like a surprise to people that we had such a mess, so much poverty. Um, but it's in fact the case that for the five years between 2002 and 2007, the people at the top, the 1%, the as Occupy says, had income that grew 10 times faster than all the rest of us. And so in, in 2007, the bottom 90% had an increase of income of 5%, whereas everybody, uh, the other upper 1% had a rise of 224% from that's, that's how d big the difference is, 5% and 224%. But the top 0.1%, that's the 1% 0.1 of the 1%, their income went up 390%. This is, this is the society we now live with. And so, in J for example, in Japan, the average CEO of a company earns uh, 11 times more than the lowest paid worker. But in our country, that CEO earns 475 times more than the lowest paid worker in the company. So there's been a massive growth of inequality in the US. We used to lead the world pretty well in having a strong middle class and show social equality. But now we're number 93 in social inequality, number 93. And we're down there with Iran, which is a little above us. It's number 90. Um, you know, and, and uh, Mexico is just a little below us. Um, the lowest is South Africa at 133 on this scale. And there's no other industrialized company that far down. So the Occupy movement is about this, these economic, fundamental economic issues. And it's amazing in the way it has been a witness to the problem and the hope. The problem and not just hope, but living out the world we want to see. In those places where we went to plazas, places where people occupied and took back some private spaces. You know, we've lost so much of our commons where we can mm -hmm. gather in public space. We now have private malls and stuff, and they can throw you out if you do anything political. But when people went down into those tents, they didn't just protest, they were actually living out a different life, a, a different world, the world they wanted to have. So everybody had everything they needed. They didn't have to pay for it. Um, and there was this amazing creativity and art and joy and celebration in it, um, and a huge amount of imagination and humor, lots of humor. So p you don't ever hear that in the media. You just hear that the police attacked and there was some awful thing that happened. Um, but there, so there was that sense that we are planted as the paradise in this world. We're going to make it. We're going to make it happen. Uh, and there was an intense amount of, of joy in that. Um, and so what I think we were trying to live out today was a sense of what is a sacred economics. What is an economic system where everyone has enough and everyone can thrive and, and it's not one in three children living in poverty and one in 400 Americans being homeless. Um, and who wants, I have to ask, if you're a Christian, who wants to live in a world like that? Who wants to live with the level of human misery? One in 400 Americans is homeless. There are 25 empty houses for every homeless American. And one in four homeless people is a veteran one in three is a child. This is a level of human misery that no conscientious Christian should be willing to tolerate. And Occupy may not be your cup of tea for trying to do something about it, but if you're not doing something about it, then you're just saying, it's fine that I live in a society like that. A rabbi once said to me, the, the commandment that you shall not lie, that you shall not tell a falsehood, is not about you personally and your personal ethics. It's if you believe in a God of justice and love and you live in an unjust society and you do not do anything about it, you live a falsehood. Then that's the call of Luke 4. That's the message about today this text being fulfilled is that we have to be about the work all the time.
we had our we had so many different things at the interfaith tent. Um, so um, there was a, a group called Seminary of the Street that li did liberation Bible study, and they looked at these economic texts. There's so much t stuff in the Bible about poverty. Everybody seems to ignore that. So they, they did liberation Bible study. We had a Hindu practitioner who did liberation yoga. Um, we had a Native American person do talking circles where we would bring people, you know, there's a lot of argument in the Occupy movement, which is actually kind of fun. People are smart and they care about their ideas and they talk. Um, and we had talking circles if conflicts got kind of stuck. And, and so we encouraged that sort of thing. I think one of the, one of the, um, the, the fun things, I mean, one of the things about a lot of the liturgical stuff that happened at Occupy was that it had a, a, an intense quality of joy and hilarity in it. Uh, and I think that that's missing in most Christian liturgy. We somehow think if you're spiritual, you're sad. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> instead of, it, so we did Eucharist type feasts at one Thanksgiving when they had cleared the plaza and there was, there were no tents left, but we were kind of down there every day anyway to keep a presence. The occupiers decided to have Thanksgiving. And so they just set up tables with linens and everything and fed 200 people. Uh, right out there in the middle of outside. I mean, you can do that in November in Oakland. And then at Christmas, this was the funnest thing on Christmas. This is the best Christmas Eve I ever spent in my life was a flash mob for homeless people. And so we, we, we knew it was coming, so we had food, but then we all went down to an underpass where homeless people lived, and we, we had trucks, and we pulled out a bunch of tables, and we set the tables with candles and linens and everything, and then we pulled out all the food, and then we all sat down and ate, sang a bunch of carols, and then we took it all away again in two hours time and it was fabulous that that's a really different it, that's sort of like guerrilla gardening it's like flash mob liturgies um and it's it's and it was it's it's actually quite wonderful um the some of the homeless people that we went down to see were members of my t uh, my church in oakland and they were they were just they didn't know we were coming it was really fun <laughs>